I think life is full of sweet moments that sometimes we miss because our, our head is down or we're on our phones. Or, and uh, I don't know, I've, I've really been convicted to, to try to pay attention to those things. A little Amen. More. When, we, when we see what's going on around us, we're going to see God's fingerprints all over it. Well, we got Josh Havens with the Afters with us this morning. Hey. Thanks Hi. for dropping by. So good to be with you. Hey, for those that don't know, the uh, Family Life Radio Morning Show is based in Tucson, Arizona, and you're just down the street. Just an hour and a half up the road. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I live okay. in uh, Gilbert, which is just outside of Phoenix. Right. Yeah. So now you didn't grow up in Arizona. Did you? I didn't grow up there, but we are huge fans of your show. My family and I, we listen. We have a preset uh, for Family Life Radio and uh, love, love listening. Wow. Oh, that's, cool. yeah. that's exciting. lovely and humbling. And he says that to every morning show he visits. <laughs> <laughs> Not true. My, my, kids, my kids know this show. Oh, yeah. that's Aww. awesome. Aww, thank wow. you. Well, that's cool. Yeah, but uh, so I, I lived in Texas for a long time. And uh, we did a tour. Uh-oh. Did you hear the excitement? The, excite- the stars yes. are bright. So Deep in the heart of Texas. Texas. So we're both. Lived in Texas. I had the clap in the wrong oh, place, boy. by the way, but I felt the need to get it in somewhere. Yeah. Misty's yeah. from there. And <laughs> mm-hmm. I lived in Houston for about seven years. So. Oh, wow. Lots of yeah. good things in Texas. But we came out to Arizona and absolutely loved it here. Yeah, it's we nice. Oh. Love this day. It's beautiful. A lot yeah. of sun. Mm-hmm. A little hot in the summer. A little toasty. So is yeah. Texas. <laughs> it does remind me, though, of uh, Brian, who's in the studio. His wife, a comment that she made, she goes, I don't know why anybody would want to go to hell. Just be in the summer in Phoenix. The summer. <laughs> <laughs> it's as close as you can get. Exactly. Oh That's right. Well, why don't you talk about the uh, origin, the origins of the band in yeah. Texas? How'd you guys get together? Yeah. So we uh, we started as uh, it was it was actually my guitar player Matt and I, who we've known each other for a long time since since middle school. So we went to the same private school. Uh, he was a couple years older than me, so we weren't super close during school. Uh, but during high school, we sang in choir together and. I remember just thinking that guy is cool. If only I could hang around him. And uh, and after we graduated, we started working at the same Starbucks coffee shop. Really? And we were both uh, guitar players, worship leaders at different college groups. So we always had our guitars with us. And we would work in that Starbucks. And uh, it was before <laughs> people were really used to paying, you know, $6 for a cup of coffee. And so it wasn't very busy. So in the morning, <laughs> we'd have like two hours where almost no customers would come in. And we'd pull out our guitars, and we'd start playing songs right there in the store. We'd just make up songs. And a customer would walk in, and we would just start making up songs about their drink orders. And, and uh, That's fun. One thing led to another. And my, it was actually my now wife, uh, uh-huh. who I also met at that same Starbucks. Uh, she was going to school in Dallas, a Dallas Theological Seminary, and they were having a missions conference, and they needed music for it. So she said, can you guys put together some music? We put together a little set, wrote some songs. That was our first little gig, and uh, we've been playing music ever since. That's cool. I love that. How'd you come up with the name The Afters? So we we started as a band called uh, Screaming Mimes. Oh, no. are you serious? Uh, yes. Okay. It was the Screaming like it. Mimes. It, it had to do with like living out your faith. Was the you know like. Get it, uh, uh, yeah, it says reach. I didn't. Yeah. But there was another band <laughs> called Screaming Mimes. Oh, so, there was. Yeah, so we no. couldn't keep that. So we changed oh it goodness. to Bliss, and that was what we built up our our uh, fan base really in Texas was under the name Bliss, and we uh, we played shows with Mercy Me because they were a local Texas band back in right. the day, and uh, we became great friends with those guys. And so it was actually Bart who brought us to their record label, and said, "Hey, they want to sign you, but you have to change your name." So we went on a name hunt, and <laughs> naming your band is really hard. It's not like naming your kid. You know, my name my <laughs> name is Joshua. Right. And so every room growing up, every class, there was always, you know, a couple other Joshua's. But when you're a band, you have to be the only one. So uh, we went on a name hunt and had just pages of names. And Bart threw out this term that he heard, the afters. And so we put it on the the sheet. And uh, a friend of mine was going through the sheet, and he said, I'm going to look up the meaning of some of these things. He looked up the afters, and then we kind of fell in love with the name. And it's a term from the, the Middle Ages in the British Isles, so England, Ireland. If you, uh, if in the Middle Ages, if you were wealthy and poor, you really, really never mingled. So it was class structure. And so the nobles or the wealthy, they would have these big events, banquets, weddings, whatever it was. And the servants, the poor, they were the ones who served there. 
And then they started having something afterwards that was like a big party to celebrate that they did really well, and they called it the afters. But oh. the word got out that uh, it was more fun than the actual event. So the nobles started sneaking out and going to the afters, and it was the first time that there was a breakdown in that class structure, and you had the, the servants and the nobles, the rich, the poor, and we love the idea of, okay, everyone's invited to the table because that's how God's Everyone's it. there. Yep, no I love that. What your yeah. background is. That's cool. That is wow. really cool. Yeah. Well, you know, it's interesting that not only are you leading the afters, but you're also a worship leader. Mm. How do you stay grounded in your faith, especially with so many different roles, father, husband, on and on? Well, being plugged into our churches is is a big part of mm. of staying grounded. I, I think it's really important for everyone to be plugged into their their church community. Uh, for the first couple of years that we toured, after we got signed, we played around 250 shows every year, and mm-hmm. it really burned out our families. Mm-hmm. And we would come home, and we would just be exhausted. And I remember playing a show with Casting Crowns and uh, just venting to Mark Hall. And I, mm-hmm. I said, how, how can you sustain this? I feel like I'm not being a good husband. I'm not being oh, a good yeah. father. I went to church, and nobody at my church knows that I'm my kid's dad or my wife's husband, and mm-hmm. it doesn't feel good. And uh, he really challenged me. He said, well, that's got to change. You know, you, you're, you're not called to be in a band first. Your career is not what comes first. Mm-hmm. You're called to be faithful to God, be faithful to your family. Your career is down the list. And uh, he told me that he was super plugged into this church, and it's a life-giving thing. And he's actually, I think, the middle school pastor at his church, even to this day. So Matt and I, we got off the road, and it just blew our minds that we could take control of this and set some boundaries and... And it's the healthiest thing we ever did for our family. Sounds like wow. it. Wow. And uh, it, it, honestly, it was like when we wanted success the most and were willing to give anything for it is when it came the hardest. And when we re-looked at everything and said, God, we want to do what you want, mm. and we're going to be faithful to that, even if it costs financially, even if it costs in our career, we want to put these things first. And uh, that's when God blessed everything the most. Well, you know, wow. uh, reminds me of a, a verse. Seek first the kingdom of God mm. and his righteousness, yeah. and then all these, all these things. things will follow. The things are the stuff of life. Yeah. The success mm. is added unto you. Well, that's huge. Yeah. That's that's great. You know, I mean, I think that's a lesson for us all. And if you're struggling in an area, what do I have before him? Mm. You know? And I, and to this day, I just love being plugged into my church. We just had Good Friday mm. and Easter. And walking through that with community, we have just an amazing community. Uh, it's a church called the Grove in Chandler, and we just love love being plugged in. And so I know over the last couple of years, a lot of people have, have maybe stopped going to church, right. gotten out of that habit, or they're, maybe they're going to church online. And uh, we, you know, we went through that season in our church too. But man, being plugged in and actually gathering with people, there's, there's nothing like nothing it. can replace it. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. I mean, it, the things that we had in the meantime— well, they help, like Zoom and yeah. watching online, but it just still doesn't, you know, face-to-face, and it, 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 you can't replace that. You can't. No. It's like playing live shows. We're playing live shows now, and it feels so good to be with people, <laughs> the energy. You just feel what God is doing in a room, and, and uh, it's just not the same online. God uses online, too, and it was cool to see that there was that tool during this time, uh, but, yeah, it's great to be back together. That's awesome. Mm. You know, going back to success, you guys as a, a band have found a lot of success, which is awesome. But I, I saw a video where you were talking about dealing with insecurity, and it might surprise people listening to hear that that somebody who has found your kind of success would deal with that. And I was hoping mm-hmm. you would talk about that and, and how God walks you through those times. Yeah. I mean, you know, like any person, you can, I feel like I can get my head sometimes. And uh, when I was younger, you know, I... I went through times when I uh, felt really insecure about all kinds of things. From, I remember I, when I was a, a teenager, I n- would never take off my shirt when I'd go swimming because I was just super self-conscious, that kind of thing. And, you know, we live in a world that tells us, um, mm. and it was, it was for unhealthy reasons because I didn't feel good in my own body. I didn't feel. Sure. And, uh, you know, now I have kids, and I see the things that they're being told uh, that they are by the world. And right. I see the, them dealing with insecurities and deal, and it just breaks my heart because that's not what God thinks about us. It's not what, what God wants for us. And, uh, you know, I tr- so I have, I have two daughters, two sons, 
and three of them are teenagers now. And I just want them to know how loved they are and how wanted they are by God, how they belong with him, how they'll always be enough for him. And, uh, and they don't hear that from the world. You know, with, mm. with all the, the stuff on social media, there's all these things that feed our insecurities, that tell us we're not enough. Comparison becomes this thief of, of our joy. That's for sure. And, uh, and yeah, so, you know, going through life, uh, I definitely had some people who spoke a lot of life into, into my life. And uh, that was definitely uh, very encouraging. Well, you mentioned, you know, Mercy Me. Mm -hmm. And uh, it it seems like uh, you got some other artists that have, who else has spoken into your life? Uh, So, yeah, Bart was a big mentor, you know, when we were starting out. They're still great friends. Um, Yeah, the uh, Mac Powell, he's he's been a good voice of encouragement. Mark Hall. uh, Yeah, no, we... We just, uh, we have a great community. Now, the, the Christian music community is a great community. That's good to know. And uh, there's yeah. a lot of, that, lot of great people who are very encouraging. You, you might get us thought, well, we're all competing against each other, but that's uh, not the case at all. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, there's been seasons when, you know, you, you wonder, am I, I'm not as good as everybody else. Mm. You know, mm. I'm going to be found out. Like, <laughs> his voice is way better than mine. <laughs> he can out. write a better song than I can. Yeah. You know, I don't know. Uh, imposter syndrome, right? Sure. <laughs> yes. Um, but then I realized, wow, we're all working for the same thing. We're all wanting to glorify God and bring people to the kingdom. And, uh, you know, God, God gave us yeah. our tools, and everybody else has their tools, mm. and we're all going to do it together to, to try to, to make Jesus famous. Amen. I, I love that. I love that. You know, just a, a few moments ago, you were mentioning your family, and I learned a little thing uh, that your wife, a question, very insightful mm. that she asked you, what are some things that you could do today that future you would be grateful for? Wow. Mm, okay. Yeah. Take it oh, away. that's a good question. <laughs> yeah. That's huge. Yeah. So my wife, she's uh, she's the brains in our family. Uh, she has all, Same here. all the college degrees. <laughs> Same if I here. say anything that sounds remote. Hey. <laughs> that was smooth there. Thank you. Thank you. See? Yeah, same here. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Sally's like, all right, I'll go along with that. All right, go ahead. Absolutely. No, it's so true. Uh, but if I ever say anything that sounds remotely wise or, or smart, it, it's probably quoting my wife. So uh-huh. just, just, you know, but she is a, a marriage and family therapist. And, oh wow, that's cool! And, uh, and so she'll have things that she's studying or, or going through. She'll, she'll sometimes bring up some great questions. And one of them was that: if you, uh, what, what would you tell your old, you know, your younger self? Mm. And uh, what, what could you do right now that your future self would be grateful that you did? Yeah. And uh, man, I really started thinking about that. You know, yeah. what, what would I do? And uh. if I could go back. It's all about life focus. You know, I feel like there, we get focused on the wrong things in life. Things distract us from what's truly important. And the older I get, the more I realize I just want to live for Jesus. Um, mm. I've, we, we've uh, crossed paths with some pretty famous people who have everything. Uh, had a day where we were with Justin Bieber and mm-hmm. had some heart-to-heart conversations with Justin Bieber. It doesn't get more famous than that. True. And he yeah. is somebody who literally has everything you could ever want mm-hmm. in this world. Mm. And he was saying when he had everything, when he was most successful, when literally the world was his, is the most miserable he's ever been. And I was like, man, if, if you talk to somebody who's had it all yeah. and it's never enough, then that's not what you should be pursuing. And he said, all I care about is Jesus. And it's so true. That's all, all I want to do is live my life for, for sharing, sharing Jesus. And so, um, yeah, if I could go back and, and talk to my younger self, I'd say, don't be so hard on yourself. You know, have mm. grace for yourself the way that God does and, uh, and pursue him, pursue him. Cause, uh, that is, that is what your life should be centered on. Mm. That is wow. so good. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah. I think that, that imposter syndrome that taking your eyes off of Jesus is Satan's biggest tool for all of us. And it's common, I believe for all of us. So yeah. Good on your wife for that. question. Yeah. <laughs> so good. No kidding. And we, we often let the things that we struggle with become the things that define us. And uh, Mm -hmm. we were talking recently about like the difference between guilt and shame. And I think it's so important because a lot of times we let shame become something that just covers us. And I always thought they were kind of synonymous. They were very similar, but guilt is kind of a good thing because it's when you, you do something and you feel bad about it and you don't want to do it again. Right. 
you tell a lie, you feel bad, you told a lie, and you, you learn from it, and hopefully you won't do it again. But shame is where you tell yourself, I'm a liar, mm. and you let it mm. define you. And that's so toxic, and it's so wrong, and that's not what God believes about us. And so, Mm-mm. yeah, kind of realizing I'm not going to be defined by the things. I am not the things that I do wrong. That's not what defines me. My struggles don't mm-hmm. define me. That's interesting. Uh, I've never had guilt put in a positive light, but you're right. A negative emotion <laughs> can cause you to change directions. There's yeah. aspects of it that can be yeah. helpful. Absolutely. No kidding. Shame, however, is just is just toxic. Right. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. So uh, you guys, uh, as a band, went through some tragedy. Tell us what happened. We have been through through quite a bit through the years. Um, we've had uh, you know loss in our in our band family. Um, my my. Dad passed away from cancer. Mm. That was a big part of our our story going on uh, as as we started out. Um, our drummer lost his best friend. Uh, that was a, that was a really hard one because uh, he was a really healthy guy who you would look at him and think that that person is extremely healthy. I, he hits the gym every day. He's not skipping leg day. Mm. And uh, <laughs> and he was playing basketball and uh, just just fell over from an undiagnosed heart condition. Mm. Uh, wow. And that was one of those things that really, that really reminded us, wow, life is so fragile. Want to seize, mm. seize every day and live for what's important. Um, and then uh, I, with my kids, I had a son who was uh, born with a, a surprise condition. He was born with a, a heart uh, and lung defect. Mm. And so he had to go into NICU uh, for a couple of weeks after he was born. And uh, that was really hard. I, all these seasons and Probably the the hardest one for our band family though was our uh, our sound guy. His uh, his his child uh, had an undiagnosed condition and w- was actually uh, born uh, lifeless. Mm. And that uh, mm. man for our for our band family that was that was really the hardest thing we'd been through. How has that uh, I guess taken you in a different direction, or how did you guys yeah. use that? What did that do for you? Well, I remember the day when he went in. Uh, yeah, he went in to to have the their their daughter and sent us pictures of their nursery that they had made. And uh, later on, he said she didn't make it. And huh. apparently, there was uh, something that the, they hadn't caught in all the tests before. And and so uh, we the next time I saw him was actually at the funeral. And we yeah. we flew in, and I remember not saying a word. We just hugged. And cried together, and uh, it was it was so heartbreaking. But our after that, we had a, a tour in Europe that was coming up, and so we he was going to stay back. But we said, "Why don't you come and bring your wife with you?" And we're going to bring our wives too because we want to love on you guys. So we went to, went to Europe. We had a show in Amsterdam, and while we were sound checking at this venue in Amsterdam, our wives went out and they were walking around. And uh, we had told them, by the way, that there was a place in Amsterdam that we wanted to take them, the coolest place, to, we wanted to take them for dinner. And we couldn't remember what the name was. So they, uh, they went out walking, and they came back and said, we found the coolest place. You're not going to believe it. You're, we have to go there. And it's called the Piper Cafe. And the, Piper is the name of their daughter. Mm. So uh, it's the same spelling. They've only seen the spelling one other time. So. Wow. They said, after, we're, after the show, we're going to go to the Piper Cafe. They're open late. So we all go and uh, make our way to the Piper Cafe after the show. We sit around, have some words remembering their daughter, and mm-hmm. spend some time in prayer, praying for, for Anthony and Lauren. And then we get up to leave, and I'm looking at the wall, and there's only one thing on the wall, and it's a hospitality award. And uh, mm-hmm. Piper's name was on it. And so I called them over, and I said, you should take a picture of this because it has Piper's name on it. And uh, they came over, and Anthony's wife, Lawrence, she lost it. She just mm. broke down. And she said, you're not going to believe this, but look at the date on that award. And it was Piper's mm. birthday. Oh, wow. Oh, goodness. That's crazy. It was, it was like oh. there was angels in the room. It, that's what it <laughs> felt wow. like. Mom. And uh, yeah. it was a reminder in, in really the hardest time that God is present, that he's with us. You know, there, there's a lot of people who say God will never give you more than you can handle. I don't know that I believe that. I don't believe that. Yeah. I don't, I don't believe that's what that scripture's. I think that scripture's talking about temptation. Yes. 
That yes, he will not allow you to be tempted beyond what beyond you can. Beyond what you can. Right. But sometimes things happen that yeah. are too much. But he is faithful to be there with us and to be present and to comfort us. And and that was a sign. Of, I mean, that was just God saying, I'm with you. Amen. I see you. I love you. I'm wrapping my arms around you. Yeah. Oh, Amen. I love that. Um, so I find this interesting. You have an interesting connection with uh, one of our artists Katie Nicole, and yes. I was hoping you would talk uh, about that a little absolutely. bit. Absolutely, yeah. She's like, man, she's she's like family to us. Well, here, let's do a quick. Oh, he doesn't have. It. Never mind. Alex is not prepared. <laughs> go ahead. I was gonna play a clip of the song, but go ahead. Oh yeah, uh, we actually did some uh, TikTok videos yesterday together. Oh, They'll be coming out uh-huh. soon. Fun. Uh, she sing. We have a new song. Uh, Say goodbye. Say hello. She sings in the gang vocals uh, of it. But yeah, uh-huh. so. About three years ago. She sings in the what vocals? In the gang vocals that are on the bridge of that. The gang. I've never heard that before. It's like the group vocals. Oh, okay. That's fun. Yeah. Yeah. All right. They all gang up on each other. (laughs) Yeah. But about... Exactly. Kind of like what happens every morning here. (laughs) Exactly. But we uh, we met... She she was playing at... uh, It was like an open mic thing at a Christmas festival at our church about three years ago. And I heard her sing, and it just stopped me in my tracks. I was like, wow, she has a powerful voice. Um, oh. And she was very just kind of new and green and experienced, but I could tell she has an amazing voice, something special. So I told her, um, I'd love for you to sing at our church sometime. And so uh-huh. changed information with, she, with her family. And uh, she actually had a surgery. She, her, part of her story is that she has really bad scoliosis and had this mm. surgery to put metal, metal oh. uh, plates and stuff in her back and and uh, then had to have a surgery to have him taken out. So she had a surgery, so I didn't see her for a little while. But then after all that, she came back. She said, do you still want me to sing at your church? I said, <laughs> absolutely. So I said, uh, here's the theme. What do you think about writing a song? So she wrote a song. And I was like, this girl can write too. And uh, she, so then she, she started coming to the church. And I really, my wife and I took her under our wings and, and started mentoring her and started coaching her on songwriting and wrote a, wrote a lot of music together and started recording an EP. And then uh, people started hear, seeing her, her TikTok videos and, and her social media stuff. During the whole pandemic thing, she was really bored and didn't have a whole lot to do. So I was like, you should dive into your social medias. And so I said, what can you do on TikTok that would be special, something that would stick out? So she started right. going to these parking garages and filming these covers, doing like Awesome God and different you know Christian covers. Right. And people started watching them and sharing them and so she went from like a thousand followers to ten thousand followers to a wow. hundred thousand followers. I think she has like three hundred thousand TikTok followers now. But uh, uh, yeah, one thing led to another. You know, people started emailing and and showing interest from record labels, and and so I went out to Nashville with her and met with a lot of people, and she ended up signing with Centricity, and uh, just released uh, in Jesus' name, which is just mm. a fantastic song. Mm-hmm. It's just blown up. Mm-hmm. But uh, the TikTok video that she recorded for that song that had some crazy amount of millions of views. That's actually in my living room. That's my piano. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> That's cool. Wow. Yeah. How fun. Um, by the way, you can relay this to her, that song. Uh, we shared this during our share literally uh, saved my life just a few weeks ago. Really? Yeah. What happened? Um, I have some mental health problems. I was in a breakdown, and I turned it on at the right time, and it was like somebody was in the car praying over me. Wow. Kept me from doing the unthinkable. So give her a big mm, hug for me. I sure will. That's, <laughs> so, that's incredible. Yeah. yeah. Appreciate that song and appreciate her. Mm. Well, hey, She's let's, awesome. let's talk about your new song, yeah. Say Goodbye. It's funny. I saw that it said Say Goodbye, then parentheses, Say Hello. I'm like, wait a second. <laughs> Isn't that a Beatles song? <laughs> yes, you say goodbye. You and say I say, say hello, hello, hello. hello. Yeah. <laughs> it was about time somebody brought that back, yeah, you know. Right. Uh. No, uh, big Beatles fan. Yeah, our, our new song, Say Goodbye, Say Hello. Uh, you know, it's about saying goodbye to the things of the past that we don't want to bring into the future. You know, I think we all have those things, especially coming out of the, the whole pandemic thing. Uh, you know, I started realizing there's, there's patterns in my life, there's habits that I have, there's struggles that I have. That those are those are not the things that define me, and I don't want to bring them into the future. Mm. And so it's about stepping into the things that God has for us. And I, I've seen that in a huge way in my family, just how how God can help us overcome anything. I have a brother uh, who was a meth addict for over ten years. Oh wow! And so many people in our family had given up on him, and we saw God 
uh, really bring him uh, to his knees. And my brother's been clean now for over 15 years and is on fire for Jesus. Mm. Uh, I've got Praise a sister. God. I got a sister who was an atheist when she was in college. She studied archaeology, and so she mm. uh, she went to university, got to move to Israel, and studied under one of the top archaeologists in the whole field of biblical wow. archaeology. Wow! But he's an atheist. <laughs> And his whole goal is to disprove the Bible. It sounds crazy. That is bizarre. I'm going to dig up stuff that's going to disprove the Bible. Exactly. So he's, <laughs> and he, so he convinced her that the Exodus never happened, that Moses wasn't a real person, that Jesus wasn't real. I mean, it goes oh, on boy. and on. So we would, we would get together, and she would just be debating us oh. about all these things, mm-hmm. and she lost her faith. And so my parents were just brokenhearted about mm-hmm. that. And my dad, who passed away in 2004, Shortly before he passed away, he gave his his Bible to my sister. And it was his old, worn-out Bible that that had all of his notes in it and highlighted passages. Oh, I love that. And he said, uh, I know this doesn't mean anything to you right now, but I ask, please keep it. And I pray that someday it does. So uh, she just put it on her bookshelf, and it sat there. And yeah. about 10 years later, she and her family were going through a really hard season. She ended up marrying an Israeli guy, and uh, they they were going through a really hard season. And she started having dreams that Jesus was a part of. Really? And I remember her telling me, Jesus is in my dreams. I don't like it. And I was like, maybe you should pay attention to these dreams. (laughs) I don't like it. I don't like it. (laughs) And so uh, night after night, she had these recurring dreams. And it got so strong that she could not go back to sleep. So she got up to get some water. And as she's passing through her living room, she sees that Bible on the bookshelf. And for the first time since my dad gave it to her, Oh. walks over and opens it up, and she said on the page that she opened up to, there was a passage that my dad had highlighted, and it just popped off the page at her, mm-hmm. and it spoke directly to what she was going through. And so for the next two nights, she uh, she went back to the Bible, and each time there was something that just came alive and spoke to her. And she ended up calling me, and for where she was, it was the middle of the night, and she says, Josh, you're going to think I'm crazy but I think Jesus is pursuing me, and I want to give my life to Jesus. Wow. So I prayed with her on the phone. She gave her life to Jesus. Three months later, she flew out to Arizona, where I live, and I got to baptize my sister. (gasps) Oh, my gosh. Baptized her in Oak Creek Canyon up uh, near Sedona. Oh, beautiful. All right, I have goosebumps. And now the the story doesn't even end there. It gets even better because her husband, who is uh, a Sabra Jew, born in Israel, he gave his life to Jesus. No. Wow. He's now a Messianic Jew. And then last October, they moved back to Israel. They now live uh, right above the Sea of Galilee. And they started a ministry to reach out to people in the Jewish community, archaeology, wow. science communities, to show that you can believe in science and history <laughs> and believe in Jesus. And when you have Jesus, everything else comes alive in it. In yes. It. Wow. Really cool. Yes, yes, yes. I love it. All right, I'm just going to pass the plate now. <laughs> so, <laughs> So what I've learned through all that is you can say goodbye to all the old, just like in 2 Corinthians 5, uh, 13, where it says that when you, when you, you belong to God, uh, you're a new creation. Your old mm. life is gone. Your new life has begun. Amen. And Praise God. Definitely saw that. How in, beautiful. In <laughs> wow. Boy, one last question, and then we're going to let you go. What brings you joy? Oh, man. I love writing songs about that. We've, uh, wow. we've written a lot of songs about that. One's called uh, Life is Beautiful. Yep. And I came home from, from tour one day, and my kids couldn't, couldn't see me uh, until I, I was walking up. And the moment, the moment they saw me, they just ran to the door, and they were just so oh. excited. I could see in their eyes just that light up. And that was such a sweet moment. And I remember thinking, man, this life doesn't last forever, but mm. I want to remember the moments like this. Amen. Uh, you know, I, I think about, uh, I don't know, I love, I love witnessing sweet little moments that, that uh, like, like, for instance, we were standing at a gate one time, and we saw a mother holding her kid and crying. And uh, I went over and asked if she was okay, and she said, well, my, my husband is about to walk off the plane, and I haven't seen him since before our baby was born, and he's coming back from service. He was in Afghanistan. Mm. And so we got to witness this moment. Oh, wow. And, uh, man, what a beautiful... So I love moments like that. That brings a lot of joy. When you see things like that happen... Uh, yeah, you know, I could watch those uh, dad, uh, the service member coming back yes. uh, and reuniting with the kids videos mm. over and over, over and yeah. over. Oh, yeah. And I'd seen the videos, but to yeah. actually witness it. Yeah. Oh, man. And, and then we uh, I grabbed, pulled my camera out and, and videoed it for him. 
got that to them. But uh, yeah, all those, all those little moments like that. I think life is full of sweet moments that sometimes we miss because our, our head is down or we're on our phones. Or, and uh, I don't know, I've, I've really been convicted to, to try to pay attention to those things. Amen. When we, when we see what's going on around us, we're going to see God's fingerprints all over it. And, uh, you know, we have a song called Every Good Thing. Yep. And that's really about that, too, is that God's the reason for every good thing in our life. And he's doing it every single day. Even on the hard days, we're going to see that he's at work. Love that. Whew. Josh, thanks for spending time with us. Yeah. Man, thanks for having me. It's been awesome, Great. guys. Yeah. Appreciate you it. You brought us joy. Yes. That's right. Oh, thank so you. many levels. A lot of it. Yes. Josh Havens, yes. thank you. Woo! Thank you. you guys. Good stuff.